Hey girl, welcome to the Win A Pageant Podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby, and today's episode is very special because I have an opportunity to share with you an interview that I had with Ashley Stremme, who is Mrs. United States. She and I jumped on Skype a couple of weeks ago, and I'm so excited to share this interview with you. She's currently living in North Carolina with her husband, David, who is a professional race car driver, and they met through race car driving. Isn't that so cool? She has been in this industry for probably all her life. She's gonna share a little bit about that with you in this episode. And one of the really cool things that she talks about today in this episode that you'll hear is about how the Mrs. pageants are so different from any other pageant that you would ever compete in. Plus, she's gonna give three specific tips on how you can win your pageant, and this applies to every pageant woman out there. And I really am pumped for you to hear her just oh-so-touching story, her heart story about her platform and what she has accomplished with that during her year. So without further ado, please welcome Mrs. United States, Ashley Stremme. Hey, Ashley, welcome to the Win a Pageant podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. So I was able to give a brief introduction about you, but for people who have not met you yet, can you share a little bit about, just briefly about kind of your interest in this pageant and how you got started? Absolutely. So pageantry isn't something that I grew up doing. Uh, I actually didn't really compete in beauty pageants per se up until after I was married. Um, I had competed a little bit about my background is I grew up in racing. Um, my dad and I both raced um, automobile cars. And now my husband is also a race car driver as well, a former NASCAR driver. So racing is something that's that's pretty much created who I am. So I've, I've participated in auto racing pageants, but never really the beauty side of pageants until probably three years ago. So it's been a short but amazing journey. Um, the sisterhood, it sounds so cliche, and I know people talk about it all the time, but it really truly is an amazing sisterhood. Um, women and girls of all ages that I've never even met across the country, even across the world, um, it's a great family-oriented organization that basically really culminates well with the racing world because it's very similar in the sense of it's a just a large family, whether you've met someone or not. Yeah, that's so cool. And and tell us a little bit about your title and your pageant. Like, break it down for me a little bit about the Mrs. United States pageant. So, Mrs. United States is a very unique pageant. I feel personally, um, it promotes a married woman. So they understand that you have probably a job or a business or you're a stay-at-home mom or you're one or all of the above, to be completely honest with you. But that's what I love about the Mrs. Pageant is merely because it still gives you a voice. Yes, I may be David's wife. I may be Callie's mom, but I'm still Ashley as well. And that's what I love about it because you're able to still get involved with your community, still make a difference and still have a name for yourself while still being mom or wife. Yes. Absolutely. You're right, because we are complex beings. And so you're right, especially as, as you mentioned, business owner, and, and we just wear all of these many hats. How have you seen the title of Mrs. United States carry over into all of these other roles that you play? Have you seen them accentuate? I can only imagine it's positive, but there are likely some shadow sides too about, you know, just balancing everything. So what has that process of balance been like for you? Um, it's been a learning curve for sure. <laughs> With what I do, I actually host a television show. So that's been really rewarding in the sense that people can kind of put two and two together now and understand that, yes, I'm a, I'm a beauty queen per se, but I'm, I'm all about giving back and making a difference in people's lives. And then on the other side of things, my husband and I own a business. Obviously, it's in racing. Um, we actually manufacture our own um, racing chassis. Um, my husband designed them. So it's pretty neat on that side of things because to our customers, I'm the boss lady. Um, my husband is the boss man. That's what they call us. I don't know. It's it's crazy. It's amazing. It truly is. Again, family oriented. So that's really cool. But now, you know, they always see my husband as kind of the, the face behind the business and that's fine. But now I've kind of found my own little niche in the world as well, because now they're like, well, she's Queen B. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got a new title. How nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> so now he's kind of being overshadowed this year as uh, since I am the current Mrs. United States. But it's been amazing to kind of put our business as well as my title together because with what we do, we get to travel a lot. Um, last weekend, we were in Ohio and West Virginia. The weekend before, we were in Indiana. So it kind of makes my job as Mrs. United States even easier just for the sheer fact that I'm already getting to different states. I just have to pick up the phone and go, hey, I'm coming to your city. Can, is there anything I can help with? There are different organizations and getting involved while I'm there. So that truly has been a blessing. Although juggling schedules is still a little hectic, that has been an easier place to be with it. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. Now, how have you balanced it with family life? Did you say you have a child as well? No, I have three dogs. Okay. <laughs> so you're a dog mom. I am, absolutely. Um, God has not yet blessed us with children, but hopefully that will... I, I wanted to take this year off. Um, we were trying when I was competing for Mrs. North Carolina. And so then when I won, I was like, oh, well, we're going to have to put this on the burner. Nationals is in two months. So uh, maybe once Nationals is over, we can kind of see if it's in our life journey. And then I ended up winning Mrs. United States. And I'm like, we're done. We're done trying. <laughs> so maybe, what, we have five or six more weeks till I get to crown my new successor, which is sad and exciting all at the same time. But um, then we'll just start the next journey of life. That's right. Yeah, new season. You're right. And, and I completely wanted to just honor that decision because – birthing a child during all of the service because really serving as Mrs. United States is a full-on year of service and I know that you have a platform that you are extremely passionate about. Can you share a little bit about your story with your platform? Absolutely. So my platform is Victory Junction. It is a auto racing themed camp here in North Carolina. Um, I Ran into them in 2008. I'm actually originally from Pennsylvania. Um, I found them in 2008 and have been attached to them ever since. And it's an amazing place. They um, Basically, it's a camp for children who have disabilities, diseases, um, different things like that. And they get to go to camp for a week, free of charge to the families. And they get to be at camp with other children who have the exact same thing that they have or, or are going through. So it's really remarkable in the sense that they they get to be around other kids that are going through what they are, so they don't have people looking at them differently or questioning what's going on, but yet they have all the medical facility needs right there on campus um, if they were to need chemo treatments or whatever it may be. It's all right there. So they have the doctors and everything and the staff, and it's just an amazing place. And Coupled with my love for racing, it's been a true fit. But the little backstory behind that is um, Adam Petty. He was a race car driver. Um, he was killed tragically in a car accident. Um, but he had this dream of this camp. And his grandfather and his dad, after he passed away, decided to kind of live out his legacy and make this camp happen. So when I originally made the camp in 2008, it was actually before I had even met my husband, well, it turns out my husband raced with Adam before he was killed. Um, so it's kind of even a tighter web twisted, but <laughs> it's been a great journey. Um, and I actually had a sister. The reason I fell in love with Victory Junction is I had a sister who was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. And so unfortunately, she, um, I don't want to say she was completely brain dead, but um, she was has no function. She had no function essentially and was in hospital care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I remember going to camp thinking about my sister and watching kids in wheelchairs being able to go rock climbing for the first time. So they really, you know, kind of house and home the kids and what they need to, to be different and be able to do things that the average kid enjoys daily without thinking twice about it. So the camp has been a huge role of what I've done. Um, another great story is I was able, with the Mrs. United States organization, we got to go to Louisiana to the Oshner's Children's Hospital in New Orleans. Um, that was an amazing trip. Uh, I never thought, I never seen Mardi Gras, never got to be a part of it. And the family at end of it is completely amazing. And you got to go to New Orleans for all the great food. I'm, I'm such a beauty as well. But the, the Children's Hospital at Oshner's was a great experience for me because growing up, 
um, watching my sister. She passed away when she was six. I was three at the time. So my parents didn't think I was old enough to really understand what was going on. And unfortunately, I knew more than they expected. So I kind of watched them grow apart. Um, gratefully, they were able to work things out and find their way back. But um, I struggled with it. I remember asking God all my life. I would cry myself to sleep at night asking God why he chose her and not me. And for 28 years, um, I have asked that question until I made the trip to Oshner's Children's Hospital in Louisiana. Um, we had a, we were going through the NICU and different um, departments of the hospital there. And I had a woman come out and she's like, will you please come in and see my son? Absolutely. So we walk in there and he was um, just like my sister was. And he was just coming out of intubation. And he's looking at my crown. You know, he can't speak or anything, but he's... He knows that I'm someone, and he sees the sparkly crown, and of course, he's reacting to it. So um, after we leave, we're in the car, we're on the way back to the hotel, and I get a Facebook message from the mother, basically thanking me because they go through intubation every few weeks, and that was the first time in his entire life that he had come out of it without complications, and she wow. knew it was because of me. Wow. So, I might get a little emotional here. Yes. So that was very rewarding for me because I now know what God's principle for me was and my purpose in life. So that was has been truly humbling and rewarding for me um, on a personal level as Mrs. United States. But wow. I know it's not all about the personal gain in this, but it, it really kind of solidifies why God has put me here and what my purpose was and why he chose my sister over me. Um, so that's been truly rewarding for me this year. Wow. What a beautiful story. Ashley, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. That's, that is such a, an important moment in your life. And yeah. to think that like God's had this up his little sleeve, that he yeah. has designed this for you for such a time as this to step yeah. into that role and, and recognizing the role that your sister played in this as well. That Absolutely. her experience has allowed the compassion in your heart to grow so that when you showed up in that moment for that boy, for that family, oh, goodness, I, I love the way that God works and he no, uses amazing. pageantry. I mean, of all things, how, why would God use a beauty queen, you know, but he does, he does. It's like, oh, what a cool experience for you to be able to touch that life and that little boy will never forget and that mom is touched and what an, and Hopefully for them too, this has now created a new pattern of recovery for him. So always in the past coming out with complications, now he has it as an anchor to anchor back to with no complications. Yes. You know, that will create a, a full new pattern in his life. Wow. Ashley, that is epic. Oh my goodness. So I, I, it's just amazing. You know, God works in mysterious ways for sure. And um, I never thought that this would be the journey that he would finally answer my question. You know, a lot of people go their entire lives without questions answered. Um, so I'm truly blessed that A, he answered my question. B, he works the way he does. And C, that he continues to use me as a tool to, to make a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's so cool. <laughs> I just love that story. Wow. So tell me, what have you been able to do as Mrs. United States with the camp? So, because I can only imagine that the title alone has helped you to gain maybe even more members or funding for the camp, or how has it grown since you've had this year with the title? Yeah, so me just speaking about the camp to everyone I come in contact with, uh, just because I love the place so much, um, it's, it's, their numbers have been down the last few years, so they're trying to build. So we're hoping to gain campers. Um, I believe camp starts here in about three weeks. Um, so their numbers are rolling in already. Um, we do have a charity uh, fundraiser that I am actually hosting two tables for. It's actually next week in Charlotte. Um, so it's one of their largest fundraisers that they do for the year. And I've been able to be a part of the kind of the planning end of things on that with them. And as well as getting um, two tables full of people to come out and enjoy the evening. And they get to actually hear from two of the campers who get to attend camp and be a part of it. So, and then Richard Petty, of course, he is the the king in the NASCAR series. Um, he is celebrating his 80th birthday this year as well. So it, it's going to be a really fun and enjoying night. 
And um, if you follow me on social media, there will be a link that I will be sharing. And I'll also be sharing some probably Facebook lives that evening as well. So you guys can learn about the camp as well if you want. And if you have the heart and want to donate, you're welcome to as well. But yes, it's been about growing kind of the camp, getting their numbers back to where they need to be and just being a part of something that's always bigger than me. Oh, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So I, you mentioned three things I want to tag back to to make sure that people can get connected to this. The first was if somebody is interested in being a camper or they know someone that would be a perfect fit for this, where should they go to get more information on that? You can go to victoryjunction.com or actually I believe it's .org. I believe. Perfect. Yeah. Victor, victoryjunction.org. And or then if, 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 com. I'm not sure. Okay, we'll right. look into it. I'll, I'll figure it out and then I'll make sure to post it in the video and also in the show notes so that people can uh, awesome. make sure that they get the right uh, connection there. And then yeah. if they are interested in donating, if this is a cause that they want to support, where is the best place for them to go? Is it the same site or something different? Yes, there's actually um, a donation link on the site. Um, as for the Hearts of Victory, which is the um, fundraiser that we'll be doing here next week, there will be a specific um, website that they can donate through there, which I do not have just yet. Okay. Um, it sounds like there's some stuff in the works and that they're actually, anybody who donates to that specific link, they're going to possibly match the funds that are raised. Wow, so, that's great. Hush, hush right at the moment. Oh, but, okay. Uh, okay, we'll keep it quiet. Uh, but they could follow you, right, on social media because yes. you'll be promoting that heavily. So where yes. can they find you on social media to make sure that they can follow that happening? Absolutely. I'm at facebook.com backslash Ashley Stremme, or you can just search Mrs. United States um, dash Ashley Stremme. Um, on Instagram, it is Mrs. United States 2016. And on Twitter, that's the other one, at Ashley Stremme. Great, good. And you're on all of these social medias. Girl, you are getting out there. That is incredible. <laughs> Not to mention managing a home, managing your marriage, managing your job, all these things you have going. I commend you for that because that's incredible. <laughs> well, I have a great husband. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about this husband of yours because... We know that, uh, and for those who do not know, David is, has been, as you mentioned, in NASCAR racing. Um, and, and you also kind of alluded to this, that the spotlight has been on him for many years. And now this year, it's kind of been shifted to you a bit. Um, but I, I'm curious to know how the two of you met. And of course, you share similar backgrounds. But can you tell us the story of how you met? Absolutely. So we met at a dirt track in Alabama. How romantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It was very random. We actually had a mutual friend and we were both in relationships at the time. So it was kind of just a hi, how are you? And um, then about three years later, uh, I had another friend come into my life and she, her and I became best friends through an organization that we were working with. And um, really the, the big guy upstairs, again, he aligned the stars for, for David and I to reconnect. Um, it, it's kind of a crazy twisted story. Again, uh, you know, the world's a small world. I think every day it gets even smaller, but, um, he finally got the nerve, I guess, to call me. Yeah, of course. He had to work <laughs> up the nerve. Of course. Look at you. You're stunning. Oh, thank you. Yes. So he finally got the nerve to call me and, uh, I lived in Pennsylvania at the time he was living in North Carolina. So, this great app, Skype, um, kind of brought us together and made our long distance relationship work. And so we were able to, I was able to finally move to North Carolina. Um, I was fresh out of college and um, had just gotten a new job and had been working there for about a year. And I kind of wanted to leave with them on good terms, just in case things didn't work out between him or I, I at least knew I had a job. Smart girl, I smart girl oh. planning ahead. <laughs> and then the rest is history. Um, thankfully, he he laughs because he's totally not the pageant husband. Um, he doesn't enjoy being called Mr. United States. He's like, this is all about you. This isn't about me. You know. So he's been very very gracious in that aspect of things. Um, but I never thought I would get so much enjoyment out of hearing him say, I got your crown box, babe. <laughs> ah, that's great. Oh, yes. Famous quotes. I got yes. your crown box, babe. Oh, that's adorable. Well, it definitely takes a team. And even for those that are in the teen or the Miss pageant, they also have a team, usually mom or dad or 
the best friend or the boyfriend or someone is is around, but you're blessed to have your husband and also to be really, it seems like when I, when I see your relationship and of course from afar, uh, we haven't even met in person. So to see your relationship from afar, it just really seems like the two of you just walk step in step and that you just are, are really uh, on path toward a great vision together as a couple. Could you share a little bit about how that vision has developed throughout your marriage over the last several years? Well, I must say, I'm glad it looks that way. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing's perfect, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, I don't think we always share the bad days on social, on social media, but no, of course. It's, we do have our, our differences, so to speak, um, but we do. We really work well together. We are a team. We understand that we have to work together. And even though we have different ways of getting there, we both have the same end result in mind. So that's where it just takes more of each of us on any given day, taking a step back and going, wait, hold on, let's just listen to what they have to say because we both want our businesses to be successful. We both want to flourish. So just because he wants to do it maybe a little bit harder than I do. No, just yeah, kidding. really, just because his way is wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes I really do think that, but no, really. Ultimately, we have the same goal in mind. It's just we're both very driven individuals. We're both hard workers. Um, he gets up at, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. I hit the gym. I come home, shower, and head straight to the shop. He's up at 6 a.m., already at the shop at 7, and he works till 8 o'clock at night. So he's very passionate, which I also think is extremely important. Um, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. You cannot teach passion. Passion is something that is just burrowed deep down inside you and it has to come out at some point. So if you're not extremely passionate about something, you'll never be successful at it. And I'm a true believer in that because when you're willing to lay everything out on the line and you're willing to do whatever it takes, that's when you'll be successful because that passion drives you. So I think that you have to be passionate. Whatever it is, you have to find it grab a hold of it and run with it because it's just not something that somebody's going to teach you to do or be. It's just something that you find it's a fire that's lit in your belly and it, you just got to let it out. <laughs> so true. Yes. And the two of you do such a great job with that because as you mentioned, like it shows up in different ways, but when you're able to align yourself with your partner and say, okay, we're on the same team. We got the same target. So, okay, maybe this day I'll let you do it your way, but tomorrow let's do it my way, you know? And that is kind of the ebb and flow of how we get to the end result. Uh, and as long as you arrive there, that's the best thing, truly. And I know that you know that, and he does too. And so you can, you can partner in that. Um, so I want to I wanna ask you a bit about the details of your pageant competition, because being a national title holder, and particularly in a Mrs. Pageant, because... I, I know that Mrs. Pageants are far, far more competitive than many Miss simply because you're expected to perform at a higher level because you have more years of experience, you know yourself at a deeper level, so now you're competing against women who have done a lot of personal development, who have achieved a lot in their lives, who have been working in their cause for many, many years, so the level of competition is definitely up there, right? And so then for you to have prevailed above that, I'm curious what tips you might have for our audience about the actual competition? Like, was there anything, maybe mindset or maybe specifics of what you wore, how you prepared, or how, give us a little tip about how, how to win this pageant? Well, believe in yourself. And I know it sounds so cliche because you I reached out to several um, different title holders before I went to nationals. And I was like, hey, if you could give me one tip, if you could give me one tip, if you could give... And everyone said, just be you. And I know you hear it all the time. And I'm like, no, really, I want the grit of what, what, what am I going to, what do I need to do to win? Like, tell me, And th just being you isn't the answer. Like I need to know. Uh -huh. And quite frankly, it is the truth. You are your biggest critic. You're your biggest judge and you're your biggest competition. Because when you set your sight on someone else that let's be honest, there's always someone who's prettier. There's always somebody who has a better wardrobe. There's always somebody who's been doing something longer than you have. It, it's endless. So you have to be the best you that you can be and be unique. 
be something that is different, not just what you think it should be, because essentially that's what sets you apart. Being that energetic, fun-loving individual, don't try to be like the girl that's next to you because they're just going to think you're that girl and that, that doesn't set you apart. So just be you, be true to you. Um, some other tips that I can give are just little personal tidbits that I think are important. Um, when you leave your hotel room, be dressed from the nines from top to bottom because essentially this is a competition at the end of the day. Um, anybody can be seeing you at any given point. And so it's important to look 100% at all times, even though that's not the case. I'm not 100% today by any means. I've been running around all day long. <laughs> but when, you, when you're there to compete, there's a level that you do have to bring, but bring it because it's you. Don't bring it because it's someone else. Um, another little pageant trick. Oh, when you're in rehearsals, yes. Rehearsals can be long and tiring and not fun and your feet are hurting, but make sure you wear that smile at all times because you never know who the judges are speaking to. They might be speaking to the girl who's giving you the rehearsal. So they're going to say, maybe they already have a top five or a top 10 picked out and they're like, hey, what do you think? How is so-and-so today? Well, she didn't really seem excited to be in rehearsals. You're probably not. Trust me, I know rehearsals are long and tiring. I get it. But you never know who the judges are speaking to. So just keep that in mind that to always wear a smile on your face, even if it's painful to put it on, you still have to do it just because you never know who's watching. That's really, really excellent advice. I love that. And the thing about being you, sometimes when we hear, oh, just be you, be you, be you, we go into this like uh, either, it's either this, it's either, well, that's crazy. What are you possibly even talking about? Like, I don't even know what that means, right? Um, <laughs> or it's the, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to create a new version of me that's different from everyone else. I'm going to dye my hair purple. I'm going to make, make a, myself have a mohawk and I'm going to wear like a crazy canary yellow dress or something. So it seems like I've, from my experience, I've seen people take it in the, I have no idea what you're talking about, or, aha, I've got it. I'm going to create this crazy version to stand out. And what I'm hearing you say is none of those. You have to discover who you are, and then you've got to bring that to light so that you can walk out of the, of the hotel room feeling really empowered because you feel great in what you're wearing. You know that your makeup is on point. You know that your hair looks great. And that I think is, is more about it, less about, oh, I have to look like that girl or, oh, they told me to do this. So I'm wearing all this makeup and I hate it, but more of, Hey, be your best self so that others will experience you from that level of excellence. You know? Yes. yes. Well, I mean, let's be honest. I'm, I'm in racing. That's not normal. That's not typical. That's not beauty queen status to be completely honest. I mean, if you think about what people think the mold is, but essentially it's who I am. It's what I know. It's what I love. It's what I'm passionate about. So my entire road to Mrs. United States was surrounded by racing because that is who I am. I can't change that. I can't be anything different. If I would, I probably only would have brought 80% of who I am, not a hundred percent of who I am. Yes. It's not typical. It's not normal, but it's who I am. And I have to be true to me. And I'm glad that people saw past that because it isn't the norm. It isn't, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a mother at this point in my life, but I am true to me. I'm true to what I believe in, what I stand for. And I think that's the most important. I love that. You're right. And it's, and what's so beautiful, what you nailed there is how you were able to define the thing that made you, you. And you're like, I can't change it. I, I literally cannot take this myself out of this or this thing out of me. And I really think that that is the key to discovering who you are is to discover what is the thing that you know you can't be without and that can't exist without you too, you know, and you've definitely identified that. So that is really, really incredible. Yeah. So what is the thing that right now that you are just jazzed about that you're like, this is so exciting. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, we just got back from racing this weekend and my husband won. <laughs> hey, congratulations to David. Yeah, that's exciting. 
Um, so that's always a plus. Um, but no, completely honestly, we have, this is our, we're just starting the third year of our business. So the trials and tribulations have been real. Um, but the success that we have been blessed with in this very short amount of time has been truly, truly remarkable. Um, our first year in business, uh, we had 60 wins across the board with our customers and five championships. Wow, so that, that is huge. incredible. Yeah, that's, that's really huge, especially because um, David was laughed at when we decided to start the business that we did because he grew up um, an asphalt racer. And we started a dirt racing business. So everybody's like, you know nothing about this. You're a fool. Even I was a little concerned. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. But he, again, you can't, you can't beat passion. You can't, passion is what you can do with an ounce of passion is amazing. And when you're willing to work hard for something, anything is possible. And it shows in our business, we're getting ready to, um, branch out a different direction. I don't know how much I can talk about it yet just because it hasn't really happened, but, um, it's exciting. I'm excited. Um, it just shows growth essentially, but in year three of our business, that's what's been remarkable for us. Um, anyone who owns a small business knows you don't really see the light in the tunnel till about year four. And then you're, you can actually see the end of the tunnel at year five. Um, so at year three, this has been truly remarkable, but, uh, Right now, it's just, I, I've got my blinders on currently because I'm actually trying to get back to where I need to be because Nationals is about 54 days away at this point. So, actually, I think it's 47. I'm not counting. Right uh, yeah, now. of course not. No. <laughs> um, oh, wow. It's a struggle. Um, as, as honored as I have been to be Mrs. United States this year, um, it's been truly amazing and I don't want to queen a, a crown another successor because I want to be Mrs. United States forever, but there is a part of me that is ready to kind of get back to my normal routine in life, so to speak. Um, our business, thankfully my husband has been great about it, but I know our business has struggled a little bit because I've been so busy. But again, I would never want to give up my title by any means, but I am, I am ready to see a little bit more normalcy in my life and still be able to be involved in my community, but on a, on a lower level, not so glamorous. Yes. Yeah. And you know, that's, there is a reason why it's only one year long because it's right. a very intense position and it does require a lot. Sure. It's a job. So it does require a lot of effort to, to truly put that, that effort in. Um, let me ask you this because I'm I'm curious what you are looking forward to as as Mrs. United States, but now giving up the title. Are there certain responsibilities that you'll have at nationals, or do you kind of just get to kick it and watch the show? <laughs> right, absolutely. Um, no, you know I can speak from when I went last year. And, you know, you really idolize the queen when you go because you want to be the next Mrs. United States. So I can totally respect after being there last year and what this year is going to be like. Um, you know, I don't want to say you're idolized, but essentially they want to be like you. They want, you know, and I wanted to be like the last queen. And it's just it's it's a competition. It's what we strive for. Yes, it's about giving back to our community and making a difference and and being the change you wish to see in the world. But at the end of the day, it's still there is still a personal fulfillment that comes from pageantry. Um, it is a competition. We are all competitive women. But the great thing about the misses and and I can kind of speak because I have seen the miss and everything. But what I think is so great about the misses is the fact that. When you get there with those 50, 49 other queens, it's more about empowerment. Because it, when you become a missus, you've already kind of found your niche in life. You already have goals that you've achieved or, you know, so the cattiness that maybe other pageants have seen when you're at the younger stages, um, just because everyone wants to win and unfortunately there can only be one winner. But when you get to the misses, it's amazing because the sisterhood is there, but it's even greater because it's all just about empowering each other because everybody's pleased with who they are. They're happy with where they are in their life and what they've accomplished. And this is just something that they want to go out and give a, you know, the good college try to. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> 
Yeah. So it's really cool just because it's all about the sisterhood. Like I think I have at least 10 or 15 sisters that I'm in constant contact with. Um, and to me, that's remarkable from everything I've ever done before in pageantry. It's always been like one yeah. or two. <laughs> and then you lose touch after three or four months exactly. or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but our fa- we have a Facebook chat for the class of 2016. And of course, it's still going, you know, there's constantly someone posting in there at least once a week. So uh, it's just this sisterhood when you get to the Mrs. level, I think is much different than at any of the other levels. Yeah, that's great. And I think it takes a strong leader at the helm. So I, I want to just honor you for being oh, sure. at the forefront of that because you're creating that environment where others are also able to really flourish in their own unique ways. And they may be back into pageantry soon or they might decide, hey, I did it. That, I'm done. I'm good. You know, they don't want anything else to do with it. And that's okay, too, because they're going to still thrive in their area of life. Absolutely. Yeah. And, those, and it's true because I think, you know, I don't know. I think my mind's a little bit twisted compared to others. I can't I think, wait to hear this. <laughs> well, like, I overanalyze everything. Like, I'm that girl. Um, my husband's like, quit thinking so hard about it. Just let it go. But, you know, it's. Everyone wants the big sparkly hat, and there's a lot of responsibilities that come along with that hat. But what I think women need to understand more than anything is when they, even when they win their state title, they go on to nationals, they don't win nationals. It's okay. You still have a sparkly hat, and you can still make a difference. You can still represent your state very well. And I think that's really kept me in check. Because I want to make my sisters that competed with me proud of what I've done this year. Because I I am representing them. I am who they are and, and we're trying and competing to be. So I feel like if I don't live up to their standards and what they're doing and what they wanted from a queen, that I have honestly failed them. So I think it is important, you know, that you keep your sisters in mind because they essentially, we were all competing for the same job title. I was just the fortunate one that was chosen that day. And I believe that any of the girls that I competed with that day are more than worthy of the title. It was just, that was my day and those judges chose me. And I think on any given day that any judge could have chosen any of those women just because they all deserve the right to be Mrs. United States. So I feel like there was a, there's a level that I have to keep up just to, you know, keep myself in check to make my sisters proud. So true. That's beautiful. And and really well said. And I I feel this from most national winners that they do have that understanding in that and they're able to embrace that. So thank you for doing that. Um, and also, I just want to honor you for all of the work that you have been accomplishing during this year because it truly makes an impact in the lives of individuals, especially the women that you are representing, of course, but even in the lives of the people as a whole that you are touching with your platform, which is just amazing. That work that you are doing is so important and so niched. Like there's there's nothing like it. And so this is an, an important cause. So I'm so grateful to you for that and for just representing the Mrs. United States pageant with such grace and beauty. So thank you for all that you have done. So you just gave me goosebumps. Thank you so much. Good, good. Well, your year has given me goosebumps. So thank you, girl, for everything that you've done. So I have one last question for you. In about 30 to 60 seconds, how would you define beauty? Like what is beauty to you? Um, It comes from the heart. Absolutely. Um, You know, they always say uh, the beauty is in the eye of the, wow, I can't even speak. The beauty (laughs) is in the eye of the beholder. And I truly think that's so, and in the Wizard of Oz, they say it's all about the heart. It's not about who you touch, but it's about how big your heart is and not essentially how much you love, but how much you are loved by others. So I think that describes beauty. It's who you are, what you stand for. And, and how people feel about you. Obviously, we can all put our war paint on every single day, but uh, <laughs> that only covers the flaws on the outside. Wow, that is so well said. Thank you so much, Ashley. And thank you again for being on the Win a Pageant podcast. It's such okay, a great thing me. to connect with you. Yes, this has been a pleasure.
Absolutely. Well, thank you for what you do and allowing women like myself to, to be out there and reached out to. And if anyone ever has any questions, please, by all means, feel free to reach out to me on social media. I'll be happy to chat with you or answer any questions that I possibly can because uh, we all need another female in our corner for sure. Oh, I love that. Thank you for that offer. That is awesome. I'll, I will make sure to link all of your social media channels in the show notes and in the uh, the, in the comments and stuff below this video. So everyone will have an opportunity to connect with you there. Thank you again, Ashley. Bye for now. See ya. Hey, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Win a Pageant podcast. I just had so much fun getting to know Ashley. She's awesome. If you love this video as much as me, would you please give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with somebody who you know is in the Mrs. Pageant system that would just love to get this insight from her. And also, as you heard, she would love to hear from you. So leave a little comment in the video comments below. I know that that would just absolutely light her up to hear from you. And I'm sure she would answer any questions that you have. Thank you again for tuning in and I will see you on the next Win a Pageant Wednesday.